Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s campaign manager, Dennis Kucinich, sent two letters last week to Democratic National Committee Chair Jamie Harrison, one in which he requested a meeting between Harrison and the presidential hopeful, also asking for more transparency in what has turned out to be a nominating process shrouded in secrecy from the RFK Jr. campaign. Meanwhile, Kennedy blasted the DNC, which has thrown its weight behind Biden, saying they have no appetite for a primary. Speaking to Forbes, he addressed the party's effort to cast him aside and how he might circumvent the party's arm altogether. Let's listen. Is they've moved the, um, the Iowa primary. They've made rules that if anybody campaigns in Iowa or sets foot, any candidate sets foot in the state of Iowa or sets foot in the state of New Hampshire, that none of the votes that are cast for that candidate will be, uh, will be tallied. In other words, any delegate that I win in New Hampshire or Iowa would go instead uh, to the president. If you add up all the super delegates that they control and all of the automatic delegates that just go to the party and go to the president, uh, you know, I would have to win almost uh, 80 percent of all of the states. Here to discuss further is politics reporter for Semaphore, Dave Weigel. Good to be here. Thanks, guys. Yeah, so, you know, you followed um, some of the uh, RFK Jr. campaign drama. Uh, it seems that, you know, the, the campaign is increasingly frustrated trying to make its way in, in the Democratic Party's nominating process to the extent any process is taking place. Um, how do you see this unfolding? Yeah, well, as far as the DNC is concerned, uh, and they'll say so on the record, but they don't just have a sign on their website or something to make it easy. Uh, they've endorsed Joe Biden. This is the party that will renominate Joe Biden at the convention next year. They, they view this primary the way that the Trump campaign viewed the 2020 primary, which is that, OK, other people might run in it. But we're the party if, uh, apparatus supports this uh, president. Kennedy, you saw in that statement what he's doing is just trying to change the reality here and say, no, this is an open primary and they should they should treat it as such. What he's also doing in that statement, though, is suggesting that uh, he is he, he might be denied the nomination by superdelegates. He's very far away off uh, getting that nomination right now. And we'll probably get into this. But just Kennedy uh, got into the race. His polling was higher than Democrats expected. It's he got, actually dipped since then as he's gotten better known among Democrats. And he's he's polling at a level where he would not threaten uh, Joe Biden's nomination as, as it stands. Well, right. I mean, I do think that that's a double-edged sword. A lot mm -hmm. of, at this stage, a diff especially with anybody going up against an incumbent, uh, it, the power of incumbency is incredibly powerful. But the story is that RFK Jr. unexpectedly did reach, I think, a peak at around 20 percent of the voter share against Joe Biden. And that compared with majorities of Democrats, major overwhelming majorities of Americans, but a majority of Democrats preferring that Joe Biden not be the nominee in polls. And majorities also now with more recent polls showing that there are concerns about his age and mental fitness. Is, there, it does seem to be the case that there would be a significant opening for someone like RFK Jr. or any number of other candidates if the process weren't so, as some people put it, rigged. There was a clip going around from The View mm -hmm. over the weekend in which the women were saying that there were no challengers to uh, Joe Biden, which, of course, is not true. Both RFK Jr. and Marion Williamson have long announced their presidential campaigns. And there are also shades of yesteryear with the Bernie 2016 um, contest being relived by folks who point out things like how Bernie won what was it every county in West Virginia, but only got one more delegate out of West Virginia because of the superdelegate uh, kerfuffle that was so animating to folks as they made decisions about whether or not it was viable to ever run as a non-establishment candidate within the Democratic Party. So I wondered if you could paint a picture of this that contrasts perhaps with how mm -hmm. the Republicans are handling their primary contest. Obviously, they don't have an incumbent, but Donald Trump, in some ways, having been president before, is a constructive incumbent. What do you say to folks who say Republicans in this context seem to have a much better grasp on what it means to have a Democratic primary than the Democratic Party? Well, I don't want to defend either party, but the Donald Trump is not president right now. I think, you know, Jeffrey Clark and, and John Eastman might, might think he should be, but he, he's not. And they have just handled this in a different way. And this is the thing. The legacy of 2016, I think, for both parties is that. People have a, a view of these apparatus, uh, the app apparatus that run the that, that run the nomination process, but not the voting in the states, uh, the DNC, the RNC, 
uh, they view them as establishment uh, battleships that are not going to pre- prevent anyone else from getting the nomination. In 2020, sorry, 2020 with Trump, that actually happened. There were states like South Carolina that just canceled the primaries and said, OK, our delegates went to Trump, even though Trump had three uh, opponents. And this time they are, I think, awkwardly handling this as, yes, he's the front runner, but he's not the nominee yet. So among other things, they can't f- fund his legal bills the way they did when he was he was president. Uh, so not defending the party, they're just, just the, the rules they have when it comes to the Democratic race. It's uh, it's actually less competitive than than the Republican race right now, despite the polling which you pointed to, it, which is unanimous that most Democrats have a problem with President Biden's age and they would love an alternative. They're not going to Kennedy. I mean, we're we're talking on September 11th. Uh, at this point in 2015, when Bernie was challenging Hillary and Martin Malley was running, etc., uh, the national average it was a 23 point lead for Clinton. Uh, in real, real clear politics, which has everything up. And it's it's about a 50 point lead for, for Biden right now, despite all his weaknesses. Uh, so the party is just uh, getting away, I would say, with just not opening the primary process up and saying we want a challenger. And there is that question. You asked it. What would happen? Uh, what would happen if Biden something something occurs? It's always odd to speculate about, but something that occurs that makes people say we're not sure we can nominate this guy again. Uh, there's a disaster. We, we have time for another nominee. How do we open this primary up? I think the DNC's role would just be having another vote and say it would be a mess, frankly, because Joe Biden still controls the party. But they would need to vote on, OK, what's our primary schedule? Uh, they, they don't have as much power as people think they do. They do have enough power to say if you're running against the, the incumbent president, you're polling at 10 percent. We're going to ignore you. David, I, I'm curious if you've done reporting from the ground and how people in New Hampshire and Iowa are feeling about what seems to be a much more overt uh, sort of meddling with the outcome of a Democratic primary, uh, trying to penalize people who would run, the, the, the non-Biden candidates that are going to run in, for example, New Hampshire, despite the DNC changing the order of the primary states and Joe Biden choosing not to run in New Hampshire himself. One, I do think that most people don't know that Marianne Williamson and RFK Jr. are running. And two, also don't know right. about this kind of rigging by the, the DNC, if you will. But the people in New Hampshire most certainly do. So how are they responding to being deprioritized in this way by the Democratic Party? Well, they're not happy about it. Now, different reactions. In, in Iowa, uh, the party there really has lost everything except a state auto race in the last four years. Uh, so they, uh, they, what they miss about the primary is the resources that come in to help them win every election. And that's not happening in the general this time, even with, with Joe Biden, because he's just not popular in Iowa. He, he, he tried a little bit in 2020. He lost by the same margin as Hillary. They're being ignored. New Hampshire is different because it's a competitive state with a very strong Democratic Party. And they're being, I'd say, genteel about it. <laughs> they're not they're not really mm-hmm. trying to muscle muscle uh, muscle Biden in to make a decision. But they're Iowa is a party run caucus. So if the state, if the, if the national party says we're ignoring that, then they could, they're probably they're going to hold a caucus. Joe Biden won't be the, the uh, on the ballot, but probably like has happened in the past, people will vote for undeclared or, or write in Joe Biden. In New Hampshire, it's the state that controls the primary. The state is going to have a primary. So that's what Democrats are bracing for is, OK, you're, you're going to have a nominee if, if Biden is the nominee who made our primary irrelevant and punished uh, the, our, our opponents for the the for even competing for getting any delegates at all. One thing I'd say about the superdelegates is the the rules changes after Bernie ran are that their superdelegates still exist. Um, they are people who have permanent roles at the convention, but they don't get to vote until the pro- the process is over. And that's what they kind of come in at the end and say, okay, this is what happened with Biden in 2020. Okay, Biden's the nominee. There's 700 of us. We're all voting for him at the convention. So the the, the Biden total now is 700 new superdelegates. They're not endorsing right now. They're actually not. Even though every everyone in the party has endorsed him, you're not seeing like the AP count of how many delegates that Biden has, because they don't have that vote yet. But that's what Kennedy is talking about. Uh, if it Were he to upset Biden and win 51 percent of the pledged delegates at the, at, in these in these primaries, then the, the superdelegates probably would come in and prevent him from nominating. He's just not there yet. I mean, he's, he's saying this as somebody who's been in the race uh, for five months. He's got uh, about, about a little bit less time than that to New Hampshire and Iowa, and he's polling they're well enough to get like two or three delegates. Uh, so that, that he's as the as the messenger for yeah. the rule change. It's it's not something that affects him yet, but that's how it works. Do we have any idea? Do you have any reason to think that you know if he's 
treated in a way he perceives to be unfair, there is a potential for him to go um, independent, third party, mount a bit outside the Democratic Party. He's said so far he's a Democrat and he's running as a Democrat in the Democratic process. However, we can't help but notice that he draws a lot of support from some from conservatives and Republicans, also from uh, libertarians, as far as I can tell. He was at um, the libertarian event uh, that I attend uh, almost every year, Freedom Fest this year. Um, do you have any reason to think he is eyeing a bid um, under different uh, different owner, ownership, leadership, management? Yeah, he said he won't. And this is really what the Democrats have to, wor have to worry about. It's just how do you treat RFK so that, frankly, he might behave like Tulsi Gabbard, where Gabbard runs for president in 2019, 2020. She loses, but she gets behind Biden and she doesn't try to support a third party candidate or run herself. Uh, that's kind of where they they went Kennedy to be. He, he said that he wouldn't. Uh, the, the, the question among some Democrats, they're not really having this conversation that often, but do voters, 100 percent voters knew who, know who RFK Jr. is? Not really. We've seen Paul Lynn says some of them think he's somebody else, thinks he's a different Kennedy. But he doesn't poll as badly as Joe Biden because of what you said. He polls really kind of awful with with uh, Democratic primary voters. The most these are the people who just, you know, watch MSNBC. They show up to party meetings. They're going to vote. They what they've seen of RFK Jr. They think he is a right wing plant. That's them, not me. Um, Democrats and independents, sorry, Republicans and independents have a much warmer view of him. And what Democrats are cynical about right now is they think, OK, how many of those Republicans who say I love RFK Jr. just love that he's out there causing trouble for Barack, for, for the president. I, I think it's 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 more tangled than that. There are a lot of Democrats. If you push push these people in the party and say, yes, but wouldn't somebody who is not 80 years old and has some of Biden's uh, weaknesses be a better candidate? They do say yes. They do, that, that's the, the the twilight zone that RFK Jr. is in, is that he polls far better with Demo with Republicans and independents than Joe Biden does. And Democrats who control their process have no interest in voting for him. Hmm. And the party elite do, do not like him. And the voters, the more they hear about him, they say, no, nah, because I mean, being va being vaccinated is almost a uh, price of entry for being a Democratic primary voter in 2024. Right. Look at the hmm. rates. Most Democrats are vaccinated. Most Democrats love the vaccine. Most Democrats support the war in Ukraine. Because Kennedy, more than Williamson, is just running on issues where Republicans agree with him more than Biden. Were he the nominee? Would it disrupt things? I think it would. He's just not, he's just maybe 30 points away from getting there. Hmm. Yeah, it is worth noting that RFK Jr. has said repeatedly that he doesn't, he's not against COVID vaccines, that all his kids are, in fact, uh, vaccinated, his adult children, obviously. But we really appreciate you joining us uh, oh, sure. to give us some insight as to what's been going on in the campaign trail. Thank you, Dave. Thank you so much.